So I got into electronics almost completely by accident. Uh, and thank you, Brady. My name is Star Simpson, and I'm a hardware designer. Um, I got into electronics when I was 14 years old because I found this book. And I found this book in this old computer lab at my high school that had been abandoned. It was locked most of the time. For some reason, I was in it, and I found a book. And it was so important to me, I knew I needed to have it. So I promised I was going to take it home for the summer without asking. I took it home, and I looked at all the parts I needed to build every project in it. I went to my mom, and I was like, Mom, I need all these electronics. And it was a lot of money. Um, but she did it, and she uh, ended up uh, getting me all the parts. I spent the whole summer building every project in it, and I realize now she got a bargain, honestly, entertaining me for three whole months. Um, and you know, I went and I, I finished every project in that book, cover to cover. I left no project unbuilt, one after another. It was amazing. I learned so much. I built all of these things. I built a circuit that had a game where you touch it and it would, you know, you won or lost. I built something that lets you count numbers on a little digital display. I mean, I thought it was really cool. Um, I built something that remembered what state it should be in. And I felt like I gained this superpower. It was awesome. That's me gaining a superpower. I had shorter hair then. Um, the thing that I thought was so cool about it was that, you know, you learn to connect things that are, you know, math to how it's described to how it exists in the physical world. And um, the thing that's great to me especially is I'm not the only one to have had that experience. Millions of people have actually used the same book to learn. And I know engineers today who still think in terms of the pictures that were in the book. I ended up going back to school. Um, at my high school, I joined the robotics team. I ended up becoming president of it. I got into MIT. I ended up studying electrical engineering, getting a job as an electrical engineer, and I think it's amazing what a little nudge can do. Um, but I think, you know, today's world is different than the one I learned in. So this is all of the radio shacks that have now closed. It's basically a map of the United States. Um, fortunately, we have the internet. That's fantastic, right? But I think there's something to the physical experience of building electronics that's different. You know, it's tangible. When you poke at something and you can debug it and you can see, uh, you know, where your mistake is, that's so, so important, so tangible. So I found that book again. It's called Getting Started in Electronics. And, you know, the whole thing is drawn by hand. The idea is that you found someone's notebook and it just happens to be about learning electronics. Um, I forgot about it for years, and I just found it again. I put it back, by the way, at the end of the summer. Um, and it talks you through how to understand electronics as a language. Um, so let me talk a little bit about how that works. Electronics are described in terms of these pictures. So this is sort of like the floor plan of a circuit. So each of those is a meaningful symbol. It's part of it. And so once you have that floor plan, um, you know, you can sort of, you can understand how it works, and you can figure out how to build the physical thing from it. Um, so it, in, my, in that sense, to me, it's a lot like learning how to read, um, and, and learning how the physical arrangement of things is meaningful. Um, so once you can understand a schematic, which, you know, the book works you through, uh, you can go on to build the physical hardware based on it, um, or you can even go in reverse. And this was, you know, a major insight for me, was learning you could look at a piece of hardware and work out how it goes together. In fact, this is a picture to me of an insight that took a lot of time to build up. Uh, this was a, a thing you could do is you could hold a piece of hardware up to a light and you could see how everything was connected. And if you're really patient, you can write down all of the connections um, and understand how it works. But so, you know, schematics are usually these symbols. Uh, they're usually the same sort of components. You see them everywhere. And, uh, you know, once you can figure out how they all go together, you can decide what you want them to do. And I started thinking about how to make a piece of hardware that included all of those insights. So you can see here, instead of holding it up to a light, I've designed the circuit board that shows how everything's connected. It has the schematic. It includes the language that describes itself. This is the backside of the same board. You can see a description telling you how it's supposed to work and what it's supposed to do. Because I want everyone to be able to have the experience that I did when I was first learning electronics. Um, to fill the gap left behind by Radio Shack. They're called Circuit Classics. Thank you. <laughs>